Hello, welcome to Acoustic Spotlight, a program that features performers of acoustic music. I'm your host, Rich Petra. Today's spotlight falls on a musician from Winter Park, Florida, Jai Michael Barry. The way she danced on the deck to Tozier's blues was nearly as compelling as the storm that had just blown through. Stacks of skirts spun around her as she spun inside of them, spinning wild, spinning free. She's a daughter. She wore reflected her commitment to herself, not the average form. My age was twice hers, and that was okay, cause we connected, not in physical, but in life on Siesta Key. One stormy. said, girl, how may I reach you? And she said, boy, I'm not so reachable. But no, my time on this beach with you feels oh so familiar to my soul, my soul. We're back uh, on Acoustic Spotlight with Jai and Michael Barry. Jai, welcome Rich. to the program. Thank you. Thanks for coming down. My pleasure. Uh, One Stormy Night was your first song there. One um, Stormy Night. Tell me about the uh, inspiration for that. I was um, in the Sarasota area during the Hurricane Charlie, uh, the three hurricanes in a row, mm -hmm. a few years back, and was hanging out with some friends and met. Um, this young lady at um, an oyster bar. And she was, you know, in her early 20s, college girl, just really hip, hippy dippy sort of energy. Um, and I just noticed her, she was dancing around on the deck and um, we befriended one another and, and it was purely platonic and just purely, you know, a friendship based relationship. Um, but I was just really touched by her and her, um, her demeanor and her personality, and it just inspired the song. Yeah. Did you write it soon after? Or? I did. Did you? Yeah. Yep. And I visited Sarasota a few weeks later and bumped into her and actually played, played it for her, and she was touched. And wow. it was one of those groovy, synchronistic moments. Life experiences. Yeah. 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 Now, you know, I've known you for some time. But mm -hmm. How? Uh, let's talk about your songwriting time sure. frames and, yeah. and how long have you been been writing and performing? Um, seriously writing for about five years, I think, is when I really began to take on, you know, that I had, um, you know, s a little bit of hidden um, inspirations that bubbled up. And um, as I, you know, got more inspired by the people who I've listened to growing up and, and in those current days, I just uh, began learning some of their techniques and 
Um, I've never been a poet or much of a writer, but um, just became really moved by what came out of my heart. And uh, so. And as far as your playing goes, that you've mm -hmm. been doing longer. Um, I got my first guitar when I was like, you know, we four or five years right. old and, and had other instruments and um, had piano lessons, but never really was interested in um, following through with that. I had other things on my plate and, you know, had sports and family and traveling and things like that. Um, but it wasn't until about my mid-twenties that I really started playing more and more, and it became more than just a hobby. And then uh, your guitar is a, it's a beautiful instrument. Thank you. Can you tell us a little about it? I will. Um, this is actually a Breedlove, and it's built um, in Bend, Oregon at the Breedlove Custom Shop um, by a man named Kim Breedlove, who used to be one of Taylor Guitar's head designers, and he broke away and started the Breedlove Company. And uh, I like it. Francesca, my partner and I, we spent hours and hours in the store one weekend and just played every possibility that was available and this is the one that I settled on. That's very nice too. Is that his signature mark, I guess, on the, on the, yes. the neck there? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah, the inlay's very nice on it too. Yeah. yeah. Um, now, when you've played out, I mean, you, you generally will play either by yourself or uh, with Francesca as well? Um, yes, currently with Francesca. I have been mostly a soloist and have um, really always been inspired by the, the harmonies of, you know, going back as far as, you know, Simon and Garfunkel and in the current day, Iron and Wine is one of our favorite um, current singer-songwriter duos. Sure. And um, we just really love the sweetness that's available with harmonies. And she also plays a few other instruments too, which add, you know, other dimensions, so. Makes a nice, uh, yeah, nice yeah. accompaniment then. Yeah. yeah. You mentioned uh, Iron and Wine. What, what are some of the other influences that you have, you know, personally as an artist? Um, you know, going back, Leonard Cohen and Nick Drake and Steely Dan, and even in, in the 70s, Rush and uh, Montrose, and so everything from the garage band thing up to the more, what I consider more refined acoustic. Um, again, Iron and Wine, um, Elliot Smith, who's passed, but who's one of my favorite sure. singer-songwriters, yeah. and um, even some local folks, Matt Butcher is amazing. Um, who else? Joseph Martins, um, Roger Docking, just some local guys who I really appreciate their style yeah, as well. There's, a, there's definitely a lot of uh, good local Lots talent of great talent too. Yeah. in this area, yeah. yes. Well, speaking of talent, uh, you're in that uh, uh, book as well. Am I? Thank and, you. And uh, if you'd care to uh, do another song for us? I would. I think uh, we'll together, Francesca and I will do a new tune called Crossroads. Crossroads? All right. Yeah. Good. Okay. Well, let's uh, come back and join us, and we'll hear another song from Jai Michael Berry with his partner, Francesca. Crossroads, all winds 
hands pulled to the cross. Just to be reminded just who we are. Ancient wisdoms from ancient stars. The wheels she calls upon us, the wheels who we are. It's true, all that they say. Clouds of blue surround stones of gray. Your alignment is true, this is true. We have come to align ourselves with you.
We're back with uh, Jai Michael Barry. Well, talk about a bit of a change up there from song number one. Those uh, those two, a little bit, mm -hmm. little bit different. A little different <laughs> by design. Yeah. Now, how did you come up with uh, the idea for that instrumentation on Crossroads? Well, it all started when a, a friend of mine who used to come and listen to me play in Mount Dora. Um, brought me the ukulele. She gifted it to me and it was hers. It was made in 1936 and it was in her family since she was little and she just showed up one day and she said, hey, I'd like you to have this. And so I knew I needed to use it, you know, in a piece of music. And as I dabbled with it, I like to use alternate tunings from time to time. So I came up with a tuning that I like that sort of actually um, like Sam Pacetti and Gamble Rogers, their their style really was the inspiration for the musical drive behind the piece. And um, you know, those those of you who know me know that I'm an esoteric kind of guy. And so the lyric is actually based on um, the law of attraction, which you know states that that which is like itself shall be drawn. And so those little snippets of lyric in the song are actually like true life. Um, experiences that I had and illustrate how um, one right thing does lead to another right thing. You know, I grew up in a house on a hill and the hill had a road to it. It's just connections. Right. And so the song really is about connections and how, um, you know, if you want to change your life, change your mind. And it's about choices and it's about decisions and, you know, your decision can lead you nowhere or your decision can lead you home. Right. And that's that's what that song is about. Now, there definitely is a spirituality to um, your work. Um, yeah, you thank you. Talk a little bit about that. Um, it's one of the biggest parts of my life, for sure. Um, and I, as I become more evolved and as I become more involved in my spiritual path, um, I see things differently, and I see that really everything is about you know connection to spirit. And so um, there's a flow that's present in my life that it just seems like, you know, for the most part, what I see, I relate it to a spiritual experience, to the spiritual experience. Do you find that that, as far as your creativity mm -hmm. has, has come, I mean, has that been, uh, has it been something that's kind of turned it on more for you, do you think? Or? As a songwriter, I would say most of my, my creations um, have had that, um, that that vibration, that color, and I'm not sure if it's really intentional. I swear, I sit on sometimes and I try to write like a commercial radio ready pop song. Never works. I always end up with something different. Right. And uh, I think it's just in my in my being, in my in my purpose, really to, to tell songs and stories about something that uh, you know. Is different than falling out of love or right. um, you know going broke or right. whatever. Right. Right. Yeah. It's always interesting in all the shows that we've done to talk to people about that because it, it is you know it comes from a different place for everyone you know yeah. and, and and some people can r relate strictly as a storyteller you know as a medium where it just comes out and has no no personal bearing and then with others it's mm. immensely personal yeah. you know and and again some just kind of can sit down and force themselves to do it and others it just uh, it just it just comes out, you know? yeah. that's, that's really great. Um, now, uh, for people that are interested in coming out to see you or mm -hmm. uh, for any recordings such as which we'll have one, we'll show in a minute, but yeah. there's a, a website? Right? There is, it's www.michaelberrymusic.com. I'm sorry, dot .net. Dot .net, okay, yes. all right. Michaelberrymusic.net. And, and I have a recording here. That, uh, now this is uh, uh, something a little bit different than what mm -hmm. we've done today, right? It is. And it's uh, the Agape Project? Agape Project. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, strictly instrumental. It's a um, little over 70 minutes of, um, of music that one piece segues to another. It's not like separate songs or anything. It's really my intention in creating the piece was really to create something that would apply to yoga, meditation, um, relaxation, massage therapy, and so it's it's lots of uh, samples, textures, ethnic drumming. There is some live acoustic guitar and some flutes and some voices, but 
it's not electronic music, but it certainly is not um, completely organic either. It's um, actually on it's on iTunes, and they put me in the same category with Enigma and Delirium, oh, okay. and and that. So, right. yeah. Well, listen, it's been a pleasure to have you down. Um, Thank you. Glad you could uh, get down here. Will you do yeah. one more for us? I would love to. All right. What are you going to do? I'm going to do Grateful. Grateful? Grateful. Okay. Yes. Well, again, Michael, thank you for coming, and uh, it's good to see you. And you come back uh, for one more song from Jai Michael Berry here on Acoustic Spotlight. Mm -hmm. Well, that's our show for today. I'd like to thank Jai, Michael Barry, and Francesca for stopping by. Thanks to the crew, and thank you for tuning in. Jai's going to do one more for us, and we'll see you next time on Acoustic Spotlight. Just another county away On my way from Santa Fe I tripped upon a folk in the road No street sign, no story told South by Southwest by God Which way now? But there haven't been a waste of time And for that, and for that I am grateful The Greyhound in Dallas found me With a new friend She said her trip was nearing its end I could not pretend my road was less traveled You know I got me a condominium behind the front of an old fair lane She was a 61 Ford fair lane 500 And oh that girl she couldn't roam But you know she had all the comforts of her home And God gives me all I can handle But she never gave me more than I could take And God knows I've been a handful I've been a handful for heaven's sake And at times I've been wasted But they haven't been a waste of time And for that and for that, I am grateful. And for that, and for that, I am.